You'll always have forces of darkness yeah. over you. There will always be intentions of evil against you. But you have confidence in God. Amen. For he that hath begun a good work in you will complete it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We're not little babes fumbling around trying to get our life together. We are sons of God. Amen. And the sons of God are led by the Spirit, Spirit of God. The children of God have a witness that they are the children of God. But the sons of God are now mature enough to know how to walk as sons of God by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. So we are no longer children. We know in whom we have believed. We have confidence in Him that has called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. And so we have this confidence in Him. So I want us tonight to come into an agreement. If any two agree. Now it's just not a, a fleshly agreement. It's a spiritual agreement. It's agreed in the spirit. If any two will have that kind of ability in God to connect in spirit together. Then it will happen. The Father in heaven will grant it. That's why the enemy loves division. He will do everything he can to cause separation. Whether it's between a husband and wife and that unit of oneness. Or he will try it in families, in churches, even in our own lives personally. Yes. We're a triune person. Did you know that? Your intellect, will, and emotion. You are body, soul, and spirit. And so if the enemy can cause fragmentation in you, then he has caused a reason why you cannot connect. There are so many fragmented Christians, mm -hmm. even within themselves. They haven't got it together because they're fragmented. We need the healer to come to bring healing by the power of his word, to restore our thinking, to restore our relationship, to bring us into oneness with the Father. So whatsoever we do will be done under his direction. So there is the power of agreement. If any two, Jesus said, can you imagine? There's more than two of us today here in this room. There's enough in this room to shake up Toronto. Yes. You look at me and say, oh, we need a lot more than that. No, no. Jesus always worked in the principle of twos. And he sent them out, what? Two by two. And they allowed them to go out in agreement together. And you have the illustrations in the Word of God where there are always two working together. There's power in that. And when you come into agreement together, the works of God will be dynamic. And so I love the story, and I'm just going to give it briefly tonight, the, uh, the short version, the Reader's Digest version, of the story of Lazarus, the raising of Lazarus. You know the story so well in John chapter 11. When Jesus was told that his good friend was dying, he was very ill, Jesus delayed two more days, did not go. And this was to the consternation of his disciples. Why wouldn't you go? He is such a close friend of yours. You can get there in time. And if you get there in time, you can heal him. They only had an ability to believe in Jesus to be healed. Although they had witnessed a couple dead people raised, they saw that. But they, they, it was happening at the moment. So if you're too late to get there, Jesus, you can get there the moment they die, it can happen. But if it's too, too late, too many hours, then it's too late. They're thinking. Don't we get messed up in our thinking too often? That we miss miracles of God because we, we regiment our own thinking or, or categorize the way God has to operate. But here we have the story to me of all stories of the dynamic of the law of agreement and operation. Jesus purposely delayed his two days in getting there. Well, by the time he got there, Lazarus had died. And so now when he gets there, it was the fourth day. If he had gotten there four hours, maybe. But four days, too late. Martha came out. She was the worker in the kitchen. Now, you can see that it's not an easy thing to have 13 Jesus and his 12 disciples. He always had an entourage. And you don't know how many others were there. So how would you like to have Jesus come to your place with 12 others and possibly double that? 
for those that are always following. Can we commit to have a bite to eat? And the Eastern custom is you wash their feet. They sit there, you give them rest, you give them refreshments, and you cook for them. And uh, that is a great work. And Martha was all upset with Mary, her sister, who wanted to be at the feet of Jesus. And uh, she was preparing the dinner. Now you can see how Martha could be upset with her sister. Get in here, sis. We've got a big job to do. But she said, I want to be at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus said she chose the better part. Now, now it wasn't that it wasn't important what she was preparing, but there are times when you have to lay aside everything else to get at the feet of Jesus. Because if you miss that, you miss the moment. There are moments that come in our lives that we can miss. And it's more important to be at his feet than at the table. You can be have your feet under the table and miss being at his feet in worship. And so we have to know how to discern the importance. Not that it was an important deed. Those men were ready to eat, I'm sure. And maybe some of the disciples weren't spiritual enough. They said, yeah, Martha, get up. Or Mary, get up there with Martha. We're hungry. We've been walking a long time. And we're hungry. And we think it's more important, Mary, that you be with Martha in the kitchen. But Jesus corrected and said, no, it's more important that Mary be with me at my feet. Learning of me. So there are moments that come into our lives that you have to discover what is the moment and not to miss it. Mm -hmm. And then, I think it was very interesting that when Jesus showed up, they said, Jesus is here. Martha was the one that ran out to meet him, not Mary. Now they were both grieving and deeply hurt in the fact that Jesus could have gotten there in time. It wasn't that Jesus did not know that he was dying. He knew it. He purposely did not go. They were deeply hurt, knowing he got the message and did not come. And so when Martha ran out to meet him, she said, Jesus, Master, if it only comes sooner, my brother would not have died. We know that. You are the great miracle worker. And Jesus said, your brother shall live again. Oh, I know he's going to live again in the resurrection. No, no, I'm not talking about the resurrection. I'm talking about who I am. I am the resurrection and yes. the life. Hallelujah. Don't talk about things and places and times. You have to know who's talking to you. Yes. Jesus said, I am the resurrection life. I'm not talking about a day of resurrection. I'm talking about the who of resurrection. Wow. Mm. Hallelujah. I am the resurrection Praise and God. the life. Oh, I love it. Yes. Amen. And she was, all of a sudden, something started to filter in there. Oh, yes. He did say, I'm going to be. What did he say? I am mm. the resurrection. He called on his eternal name, his eternal personhood at that moment. She wasn't fully grasping. But she was walking in. I, if you believe you would see the glory of God, Martha, if you agree with me. And he talked her into the moment of a miracle. And she said, yes, I believe. I believe Jesus said, good, don't forget it. Because he knew what was going to happen. Then others were gathering. And he said, uh, go and get Mary. He called for Mary, the worshiper. Who in such disappointment and sorrow was not there when the master came. And things can happen in your life that can be so overwhelming and disappointing that you miss the moments of worship when the master shows up. Yeah. Yeah. We can be so overwhelmed by our grief, overwhelmed by our circumstances. We've all been there. And I've discovered the importance of worship in the moment of tragedy and disappointment. Yeah. If you can worship God, even in the worst moment of your life, you're in the midst of a miracle. Yeah. It all is centered in your ability to worship God. Oh, I remember when we were at your hubby's funeral, in, in that service, we were worshiping God. Yeah. And see, and, and just lifted the sorrowing heart. Mm -hmm. We sang, I don't need to understand, I just yeah. need to hold his hand. See, when you worship God, even though you have sorrow, all of a sudden hope rises within the heart. Yeah. Hope comes within. Mm -hmm. And so when Jesus asked for Mary, she came and she too said, if it only come sooner, Master. Our brother would not have died. She was so caught up.
up in that. And Jesus said, your brother shall live. Yes, again, resurrection. Always in the future. God wants to deal with things in the present. Now faith is the substance of things over. It is the present moment of faith. And so Jesus said, where have you laid him? Show me. And now at this time, there were many people comforting them there. They would be uh, sorrow or uh, the, the mourning process went on for a week at least, and even a month in many cases. And family would come and friends, and they weren't scheduled to work like we are. You have to punch in at seven or eight, and there at five. They, they were so relaxed, and they had their jobs and responsibility, but it would be nothing to give a whole week or even spend a month and uh, be with a sorrowing family. So there were many others, and the word got out that Jesus was there. And so it was now a big thing that this Jesus has come. The Pharisees were waiting for him. And so this miracle was setting the stage for the drama of his death upon the cross. And so we have Jesus saying, where have you laid him? They showed him the grave. And they rolled away the stone at his command. They said, surely he's not going to do this. It was so overwhelming. Now get this, Martha had said, the master, he's been there four days. He's beginning to decay. He smells. Even the soaking of perfume, the decaying process has settled in after three days. It becomes very evident in the fourth. It's too late. And he turned to her and he said, Martha, remember what we just talked about a few moments ago. I am the resurrection and the life. I'm not talking about what's going to be in the future. I'm talking about what is now. Martha, you said you would agree with me. Don't break the agreement. He had to bring her in for he wanted to do a miracle and he was setting forth the law of agreement. And I thought, you know, he could have done this without Martha. He had all his disciples, but they were so overwhelmed by sorrow, they were in any position to agree. He talked Martha into a position of faith, and she was believing. Yes, I believe. He said, now remember, we agree. If you're going to see the glory of God, you said you believe that I am the resurrection and the life. You still agree with me? Yes, Lord. Okay, roll away the stone. 